Thank you for letting me know. I'm so sorry. This is going to go down as a how not to do a live stream. Let me go back a little bit then. So essentially, I've been wanting to share a little bit about Tulsi Gabbard. She's one of my heroes. <clears throat> the reason she's one of my heroes is she put honesty and truth in front of partisanship and likely, let's be honest, her political career is probably done or, you know, or at least likely she'll never be president or, or anything quite that high up. But, but I just love that she could, she voted her conscience. She did what she thought was right. And now of course she's the bad guy. If you're a leftist, and she's a hero if you're a right winger. And I don't, I try very hard to be centrist, but uh, sorry about that. I don't, I uh, started this too late and now I'm discombobulated. Thank you for your patience, guys. So <clears throat> if you don't know her, she served as a congressperson from Hawaii. She was the first Hindu elected to the legislature. She ran against Biden for the Democratic nomination for president. Before all of that, she was in the military, being stationed in Iraq, and later in Kuwait as an MP platoon leader. Uh, her highest post to date has been as vice chair of the Democratic National Committee, from which she resigned to be a part of Bernie Sanders' 2016 campaign. Not saying I'm a big fan of Bernie's, but she voted her conscience, and that's what really matters to me. According to GovTrack.us, she tracks a bit left of center with only a few of her votes going to Republican issues. She sponsored three bills that were enacted into law. I can't, uh, the site itself presents no figures to back it up, but says this is typical. Most legislators sponsor only a handful that are signed into law. So, yeah, she, she sponsored three bills that were enacted. Not a lot, but she got something done. Biden was at least a co-sponsor of 28 bills that passed into law in a 36-year career. So puts it into a little bit of perspective. Uh, he had more bills passed, but that is to be expected. PBS said with the primary challenge looming, she announced in October she would not run for re-election to her Hawaii congressional seat. Gabbard's decision became public shortly after a public feud with Clinton, the 2016 Democratic presidential nominee. In a podcast interview, Clinton appeared to call her the favorite of the Russians. Where have we heard that before? This is one of the reasons why I tend to disbelieve the claims that Trump is a Russian asset because that has, it's kind of like the charges of uh, one of my liberal friends ch chided me on one of my opinions. I thought a particular politician was a pedophile and he was like, well, that that's what, uh, that's what everybody accuses everybody of now. It's just, just a random way to ad hominem somebody. Interestingly enough, this same person believes that Trump is a pedophile. I have no idea, honestly. I suspect, I think that he is not. But I've been wrong before and will be again. But yes, Clinton labeled Gabbard as the favorite of the Russians, said she believed Republicans have got their eye on somebody who's currently in the Democratic Party and are grooming her to be a third party candidate. Gabbard responded by calling Clinton the personification of the rot that has sickened the Democratic Party for so long. Here, here. In January, she filed a defamation lawsuit against Clinton, saying Clinton's comments were based on either her own imagination or extremely dubious conspiracy theories. I know the right has plenty of them, uh, but don't think that the left is immune from that that any reasonable person would know to be inherently and objectively unreliable. ABC provided the most comprehensive reporting at that time. Uh, 
Former Hawaii Representative Tulsa Gabbard announced she is leaving the Democratic Party, denouncing it as an elitist cabal of warmongers. In her announcement, she said, I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party that is now under the complete control of an elitist cabal of warmongers driven by cowardly wokeness who divide us by racializing every issue and stoke anti-white racism, actively work to undermine our God-given freedoms, are hostile to people of faith and spirituality, demonize the police and protect criminals. Oh, unless, you know, you're a black who smokes weed. In that case, we're going to prosecute you. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Demonize the police and protect to protect criminals at the expense of law-abiding Americans, believe in open borders, weaponize the national security state to go after political opponents, above all, dragging us ever closer to nuclear war. Um, here she is talking about Clinton, who is praying that the tired blogger will be half an hour late to his podcast and then start it out muted. Her prayers were answered because she is a more righteous woman than I am. Uh, yes, what's this centrist thing you're talking about? You're either with us or against us. And I, kn I knew I knew it was a joke. I, I, I don't know you real well, but I pretty much suspected that that was a joke. I don't want to say that I'm completely abandoning my, my centrism. I just... I know JPRPH1 has heard this song. Uh, there's a, mus a comedic musician in Britain named Frisbee. Uh, it's a great name. <laughs> I wonder if that's his real name or if that's just his handle. But anyway, he sings about how no matter how desperately you try to be centrist, unless you agree 100% with the whole woke ideology. And yeah, I'm going to use the word woke. Sorry. Um, unless you agree with it a hundred percent, you're far right. And I hate to tell my friends this, but this is what is driving me further to the right. If you would just let me agree with you 80 or 90% or 60 or 50 or whatever it is, and be okay with the, the places where I differ with you, then I wouldn't be hopping up and down about this. But I'm silenced with hateful comments from people who are never hateful ever before. Uh, the things that I try to share are ignored and told disrespectfully that, no, that debate's already been had and been won when maybe I'm just an uninformed fool, but I've never seen the debate had until the video that I shared and I thought it was really wonderful. I thought it was very centrist. There were actually two classical liberals. They just happened to have different ideas about the governmental treatment of the disease that shall not be named. And I don't get it. Again, I don't, I don't want to go back to the right winger I used to be. I don't want to just unquestioningly accept and believe everything that Fox says because then I'm just just the thing that I'm trying to struggle against. But Gemini Christmas, I mean, how can you look at this world and not come to at least some similar conclusion? I mean, this woman was in the very belly of the beast. She was being groomed by the Democratic Party. She was their darling until she went up against Hillary Clinton uh, and if she had, uh, she was in an interview with Tucker Carlson. I doubted that I'll share much of it because I don't want to go too long. Uh, although, you know, I've got all day basically, but <sighs> I don't think it should, I don't think we're in a republic anymore. I don't think democracy is anything we we don't resemble a democracy to me at all uh yeah 
I get. I can hear my liberal friends saying all the things about Trump, and and don't doubt. I don't doubt sixty percent of the things that they think are true. I guarantee you, a hundred percent, or even seventy percent, or you know, is not the number, but maybe as much as sixty percent of the things are true. But I don't think Trump's the real threat. He has done some things that I call him out on. You read the Taibbi files, and to my chagrin, he did some censorship too, but nowhere near the extent that Biden did. And does he sometimes have some uh, pretty strong words, sometimes maybe even bordering on, if not passing the lines of hatefulness? Yes. But don't tell me that the left hasn't do it too. I, you have to dig, but it's out there. Okay, I guess I will share one more thing, and then I'm going to start sharing the things that she said on her video. Once upon a time when I was younger, much more of a Republican and conservative, maybe a year or two before I married PB Max, when, yeah, PB, I'll let you know later maybe what that stands for. I read a philosophical book called Escape from Freedom by Eric Fromm. I kind of would like to revisit that book because I've, I've changed so much over the last 25 years. But it was one of those interesting moments in life where in spite of disagreeing with almost every argument he used to build up his central tenet, I still found myself agreeing with his central tenet. A claim by Manny as the premier German social psychological work, the book states that freedom is a source of anxiety and fear. And therefore, people often embrace tyranny. Think mustache man, because, you know, I'm not allowed to say his name, because obviously if I say his name, I must embrace his philosophy and therefore need to be censored. Think modern presidents. Think world leaders throughout the world, from Putin to Modi, from Trudeau to Georgia Maloney. Uh, Maloney was the one who... The famous uh, Italian right winger that was elected, and I noticed that we get all these news reports: the right wing is winning, and yet then they don't, and yet we're not supposed to wonder about the elections. Uh, it's it's really bizarre. Oddly enough, in this very blog, I'd forgotten this. I I posted about how in 1912, Teddy Roosevelt was shot just before giving a speech. He began with, friends, I shall ask you to be as quiet as possible. I don't know whether you fully understand. I've just been shot. It takes more than that to kill a bull mo moose. Fortunately, I had my manuscript. I was going to make a long speech. And there's where the bullet went through, and it probably saved me from it going into my heart. The bullet is in me now, so that I cannot make a very long speech, but I will try my best. And then he talked for 90 minutes before he finally agreed to seek medical attention. Uh, I, some, I don't know if I totally agreed with all of his politics, but you know what? He was a really tough person, and I can't help but just think very highly of him. So... To date, he is the only third-party candidate. I count Lincoln as one, but I know most historians don't. He's counted as the only third-party candidate to ever get more votes than one of the duopoly candidates. Uh, I count Lincoln as a third-party candidate, partly because I'm a contrarian and partly because it really was. It used to be the Democrats and the Whigs, and now it's the Democrats and the Republicans. Okay. So let's let's watch a little bit of what Tulsi had to say. Uh, she's become she has become the darling of the right wing, and it's weird because I, I I mean I haven't read her book, but I've listened to enough of her speeches, and I think she's a classical liberal. 
And I have no problem with classical liberals. I have a problem with these hardliners that we have anymore. And of course, the truth can also be said of the other side. There's there are cert, there certainly are too many hardliners in the Republican side, too. I will admit to that. All right. Okay. Somebody is texting me on the phone. Uh, hey, yes. Talk to you later, John. Thank you for showing up. I keep forgetting if your name is John or Joseph. I, I, I just need to get it into my silly skull. This is John. Hugs from Moira. Codis Fact Search is saying, have a great day. She is a classical liberal. However, the extremes have gone so far outside of reality. Yes, not wrong. Not wrong at all. Thank you for showing up, uh, Codis Fact Search. This uh, video is going to be used in schools in the future for how not to do a live stream. But I will endeavor to persevere. I should have kept my blog up. I didn't show you the pictures of Tulsi in a bikini. Man. Mm. Okay, there it is. I gave my salacious, I caved in, I gave a salacious uh, thing. And Moira says that she wishes liberals were like Tulsi. I do too. I wish, uh, heck, I wish more Republicans were like her. I mean, heck, uh, it isn't so much a person's politics that, that chaps my hide. It's, closed mindedness. It's uh, putting yourself into an echo chamber. And I'm sure I'm uh, <laughs> probably flirting with that myself because I'm basically in a fairly conservative uh, pool of people. Uh, Gorilla's Random Thoughts, if you're still here, appreciate you very much, whether you are or not. Um, Oh, yes, and greetings, Mr. Londell's Groovy Movies. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this so early-ish, I mean, I know one's not early, but as I want to be sure and get to your stream, I believe, I hope that if I have the time wrong, please correct me, but I believe you're having a stream at three. And and thank you very much for being here. I will, I will try to stop wasting your time. So it's been a year since the fires in Maui. And we've, we've forgotten so many things because the news is just a constant barrage of things. I mean, one day we have a horrible debate, and then just a few days later we have a president, a historical stepping down of a candidate. Then we have a historical assassination attempt. Then we have all kinds of revelations and like it's almost assured, guaranteed that Trump is going to win. And then all of a sudden, no, it's Kamala who's certainly going to win. And poll numbers show that she's way ahead and Trump is done. I mean, that I think that's what's trending on. Uh, yeah, Trump is done is one of the top trending things on X. <clears throat> And it's really difficult to, to wrap your mind around what's going on right now, let alone let alone try to remember what the heck happened last year. But a year ago there were uh, there were fires in Maui, and the YouTube feed kept telling me that I needed to watch this and I ignored it because I've been trying to watch more of the things that the, the creators in my community are, are watching. But I finally caved in, watched it, and I, I won't share the whole video, but I wanted to share a little bit of what she has said. I don't know if that's true, but it was bad. It was a very bad wildfire, so... Oh, and I'm not sharing. Good Lord, I really mean what I'm saying. This is how not to do a stream.
And yes, it is Saturday. Somehow I made it to this Saturday. And hello, Connie Cleary, the faithful woman of YouTube, the bird woman of YouTube. As Deleted Scenes would say, check out her second channel, Fluff Chick Productions. If you like birds at all, it's really fun to watch those little critters hopping around and chirping and saying stuff. Gorilla's random thoughts gotta love how both sides are convinced their side is gonna win while simultaneously saying, yes, exactly. And in the end of the day, we're lied to so much. I don't know if it's even possible to figure out what the truth is. And frankly, I'm, I may just abandon that and become a weird talk show person that just rambles. But for whatever reason, I've been feeling passionate. Ever since the assassination attempt, I, I've started feeling passionate about that we have got to, one, we've got to stop hating. Uh, I know that's tough. I know that's tough because a lot of horrible things have been done and a lot of lies have gone on. But all that hate is doing is, is fueling the uniparty. They're turning us against each other. Meanwhile, the Dems and the Republicans in Washington are in bed with each other, just plotting how they're going to run our lives. And they're going to basically take our rights away. And not only will they do that, but we'll love them for it. And we'll, we'll be happy and we will own nothing and be happy. Maura Kitty says cars melting without burn marks around them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, Real Waden Nation Gaming Clip says, yo, thank you for being here. I hope this is worth your time. I'll try to make it so. Code is fact search. Honestly, it's an election. You're choosing a new set of masters to place their boots on your neck and ensure you continue to pay taxes. But it's okay. Most slaves want to be slaves. Simple fact. Yeah, I... I I, I can't remember if I was muted or not, but I, I think I referenced that just a moment ago. Hopefully it actually made it through uh, the Eric Fromm book, Escape from Freedom, talks about that very thing. It's a simple fact of history. I know in the Bible, <clears throat> the uh, Israelites many and many a time were like, we would have been better off to have stayed in the flesh pots of Egypt, at least we had food to eat and we're on the verge of stoning Moses. Um, I know, more Kitty, I know. I'm afraid I've been radicalized. And more Kitty Codis is right. Okay, so let's, let's see what she has to say. Oh, wow. I am on that. Okay. After the fire happened and went out to those affected communities, it is neighbors helping neighbors, families helping families. I'm so glad that we came up here yes. this morning because I don't think anyone's description can do justice, even just the, the portions that we've seen. And being able to just talk to some of the local residents who are helping us share what this community really means. They're loading up whatever they have in their general store on these little boats and running them over to West Maui on a private boat dock, bringing food and water and medical supplies. They have probably the most supplies of anyone, like generators. These guys are the most well equipped. I jumped on a plane that was doing supply runs from Kahului, the main airport on Maui. It looks empty down there right now on the road. So we're bringing in the supplies, bringing things that people need, like communications are going to be really key at this point. Hopefully everything that we're bringing can be put to really good use for the people. To say that my heart breaks sounds too small to convey not only what I'm experiencing, but really more importantly, what this community is going through. And to... Um... Yeah, uh, I, I sadly had forgotten all about this was going on. And this was another step in my, my thing. Uh-oh. Uh, YouTube is censoring me. I hate that. I'm so sorry. I promise 
I've literally never censored anyone. I may have ignored some people, but I've never, <laughs> never censored anyone. But Gorilla's Random Thoughts is being censored by YouTube. I hate that. Uh, yeah, Codus Fact Search. Yeah. Ah, I am curious what your what your thought is. And this is Mr. Londell. He has a presentation in less than an hour. I'm going to try to get through this before then because I want to be there too. And I'm trying to, uh, he's one of the channels that I'm trying to support. Uh, he and I are also going to do a presentation in, I want to say, the Saturday after next where we're going to do a watch party of Metropolis to try to get him, and frankly also myself, some watch hours. But he's a lot closer to monetization than I am. And uh, frankly, he's a lot better at streaming. So as are you, Gorilla's Random Thought. Uh, Codus Fact Search. Currently looking out my window as three individuals not born here walk freely past my house. One just dropped an empty bottle. Oh! And Gorilla's Random Thought is going to try to. They can be happy with my foot up there. A posterior. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's good stuff. Uh, I'm going to just have to shut that one down because I keep going to that tab instead of this one. Uh, I love that she's. I mean, I'm sure these are just photo ops or, or you know, little more than photo ops, but I love that she's there. Uh, I don't doubt that at least a, a little bit of time was actually spent helping. One of the, one of the few times when I was actually proud of Trump, it never is brought up, but uh, whatever that hurricane was uh, that was happening around the time of the 2016 election, he went out and physically helped load uh, cases of bottled water. Again, I know it's a photo op, but he was there helping out. And even if it is for a photo op, I just, I love that because I don't think that there are many politicians doing anything that's really worthwhile at all as far as helping. Um, but yeah, you, yeah, that was only reported by his own his own thing. It didn't make it to the news at all. Codus fact search: crime is skyrocketing. It's my fault because I was born. Asked for it, obviously. The wrong gender, wrong ethnicity. YouTube is getting better at recognizing people evading the censors. Yeah, yeah, I hate that. It's a hurricane. Highly suggest YouTube. The term. Hurtacane or restamp, <laughs> the re restomp the, the groin. Uh, yeah, yeah, Connie Cleary. We don't like censors. I am. Yeah, this is one of the. This, if if the Democrats want me to stop hopping up and down, the quickest way for them to do that is to stop censoring people. I, I know my, 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 I have leftist and centrist friends that will remind me that uh, Republicans do it too. And then they do. I just believe personally that the Democrats do it profoundly more and profoundly more dangerously. That's why you hear me complaining about them so much instead of uh, being a true centrist. So, know that in the midst of so much chaos and, and, and death and destruction, it is so awe-inspiring to see how people who have lost everything but the clothes on their back are not in a corner feeling sorry for themselves. They are stepping up and saying, hey, how can I help my neighbor? Just on this street that we were on talking with some of the residents here, they were so busy helping someone else evacuate and get out of their home that they didn't realize their own home was being burnt to ash at that very moment. But in the meantime, I ask you to join me in sending your prayers and your love, your thoughts, uh, and your aloha during this, this incredibly tragic and trying time. I'm here with my friend, Kai Lenny, uh, who was...
I know I shouldn't do this, but since I've made all the other mistakes in this podcast, I'll be in my bunk. Okay, I, 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 I'm, I'm through with that. As really among the very first on the ground in West Maui responding to this most tragic fire. It's been a year. It's hard to believe that this much time has passed. And I got to tell you, um, I travel a lot all over the country and almost everywhere I go, there's at least one person, but usually more than a few who stop and ask, how are the people on Maui doing? Uh, there's been many uh, prayers and donations and and people who have been keeping uh, our friends, our family, our neighbors in, in Lahaina and West Maui and all of Maui in their hearts. Um, I wanna bring in uh, Kai Lenny here um, and, and we'll go over kind of just a brief summary of, of what happened a year ago, why this is significant for us to mark this anniversary today uh, and really where things are now as as you know, headlines move very quickly. Uh, the country was watching. People around the world were watching what was happening in this tragic fire. It was it was the worst wild. Uh, again, this was a step uh, that pulled me closer to the right. Uh, basically, watching one of the bluest states there is, and and I also want to acknowledge something. Codis facts is is saying. Uh, also ask him a question. Is is there uh, is that Herticane, is that a channel that you're recommending? I'm not sure that I understand the comment, but uh, all politicians do it. Yeah. Demofaps are the single measurable worst at the moment. 60 years ago, it was the repukes. And yeah, we all, I think, well, we may not remember Nixon, but we remember the after effects. Yeah. No, I know. It's a phrase used in a channel. Okay. Okay. Fire that the United States. Oh, and I didn't finish my thought. <sighs> Chronic fatigue sucks. Don't have it. Um, watching one of the bluest states that there is. You know, if it had happened in Oklahoma, which is just about the reddest state that there is and where I live, I could kind of understand, you know, you're not going to vote for us. You're a poor state. You're a bunch of dumb rednecks don't deserve to live. Um, you know, you're having a problem. Go deal with it. This is Hawaii. Oh, enter the dojo show. Yeah. I'm going to type that in now or I will forget it later. Because that's what I do. Enter the dojo. Pops right up. Oh, yeah. I have seen that guy. Oh, my gosh. He is so funny. He is so funny. He actually is much better than me. I probably, if I had any martial arts skills at all, I would probably be doing something like that. But essentially, you know, loyal Democrats, their homes are on fire. Um, the, the local and the uh, national government just did a, a abysmal job with helping the people out there. I noticed that it's, She's talking about people helping people, but I notice that it's not the government that's helping them out. It's each other. And Biden comes over and he's booed. And people are very angry because, you know, sure, he came over to do a photo op. Great. But, you know, Black Rock's coming in, offering 10 cents on the dollar for their homes. And, you know, there were rumors that I'm not going to spread because I don't know enough about them, about certain celebrities doing X, Y, and Z. I don't know anything about that, but there was a lot of anger in that state toward the federal government. And there, while I'm, I'm trying to preach against hate, I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying we shouldn't be angry. There is a, a, 
a righteous anger that is deserved here. You know, and that uh, that was an eye opener to one of my liberal friends who for at least a week or two quit hopping up and down about how great Biden was. But anyway, States of America has seen in over a hundred years. Um, but as the world turns and events happen, headlines move very quickly. And our concern from the very beginning was that the people of Maui would be forgotten. Their stories, their hardship and their tragedy and loss would be forgotten in the, the, the chaos uh, and the constantly uh, fast moving headlines. So thank you to all of you who have been asking about how they're doing. Those of you who have been keeping uh, the people of Maui in your heart, in your hearts and in your prayers. And for those of you who may be tuning in and, and uh, don't know, or don't remember exactly what happened. A um, hundred and two people were killed because of this tragic and historic wildfire that occurred on August 8th and 9th uh, on Maui, in West Maui. It was hurricane force winds whipping across the islands. There were multiple fires. Flames ultimately claimed at least 19 homes and scorched over a thousand acres. Uh, there were many, many more homes and buildings that were destroyed. And I'm going to go over a few quick fast facts here that have that have come out. There was a lot of uh, questions. There are still a lot of questions, but there was a lot of information coming from all different directions. Communications lines were broke, broken down. Different levels of government were talking to each other. There, there were a lot of hardships and failures that occurred in the response to this, uh, to this tragedy. But I'm going to give you a summary of what we know now. Federal officials estimate damages at $5.5 billion dollars with over 2,200 structures destroyed. Uh, and I want to pause it so that YouTube doesn't ding me, hopefully, and also to acknowledge DJ Ronnie G. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, he's, he did a stream responding to a video about astro-colonialism. It was about protector of the mountain, making a big deal about various institutions, building huge telescopes in Hawaii. Interesting. Um, he probably can't, uh, send the link. Let me, let me get back in here. I'm going to at least temporarily make you a, uh, while you listen to me again, DJ Ronnie G, uh, add as a moderator. There you go. I hopefully please don't make me regret that, but uh, that way you can uh, you can share the link in, in the chat. So, and for that matter, have I made uh, you a moderator? I don't think I have. Code is fact search. I am reticent in my um, stuff. So, okay. And Gorilla's Random Thoughts, let me know if you'd like me to make you a moderator as well. But let's see. People should be angry, and sadly, most don't care. Yeah, I guess maybe I shouldn't be quite as upset with my liberal friends. At least they are caring. Um, I think they're buying way too many lies, but they, they do at least care. So that, that is better than nothing. I just think that we've descended too far into hate. We've allowed it to cloud our judgment. I know I have. And so in the past, I hope I'm in a better place now. But as for the fires last year, sometimes I wonder, uh, DJ Ronnie says, I don't think it was done on purpose. Yeah, I don't really think that either. I've heard those conspiracy theories, but uh, uh, I do think that once the damage was done, there's with special interest pounced on it. And I, I agree with that. That is exactly how I feel about it. Uh, the children who weren't found after the fires were probably trafficked to the private island a few miles away, according to Maura Kitty. And I, I don't doubt she's right. And I, I I'm not going to, I'm going to talk about it only because you're bringing it up. 
Oh, uh, there, there was that cons conspiracy theory that Oprah hired security to stop people from looking near her property. And I actually, that part is not a conspiracy theory. That's actually true. But there was the conspiracy theory that she was behind a lot of things and this and that. But, but she did hire security to stop people from looking near her property. M make of that what you want. Um, you, there's there's definitely two ways to look at that, but uh, but uh, people were very upset with her. Uh, I don't have a dog in the fight because I just don't know enough about that topic to really give an intelligent uh, reference. But I know you know a lot of things that I don't. So DJ Ronnie G, all these normal and poor people using all the good land. Oh, good fire, get them out. Yeah. Residents of Lithuania got $750 while Ukrainian residents averaged $1,500 per Ukrainian at the time. Wow. Uh, this is the link. So please feel free to go there. I'm going to click on it myself. Again, because if I don't do it now, I'll forget to do it later. I guarantee it. Okay. Okay. But I don't want to play it now. I just want it there. Okay. <sighs> Gorilla's random thoughts. I think I, I'm in a generous mood. And if I'm willing to make uh, people moderators, I, I'm, I'm just going to m have moderators all over the place. I know it, it probably is smart for me to have more because uh, certain things might not have happened on this channel if I had uh, more moderators. All right. DJ Ronnie G is also saying everyone we disagree with generally means well. Yeah, and precious few know how to agree to disagree. And, and that is true. Uh, the friends that I'm hopping up and down about I kept quiet for a long, long time about these things because they are good people. They're, you know, they've, they've helped me through some incredibly hard times. And so it, it, it feels a little unfair to be talking about it, but it also scares the shit out of me when I hear intelligent and loving and wonderful people. They're basically, promulgating the hate that they're being taught by all the alphabet suit, uh, big media people. And it's a helpless feeling because how do you, how do you wake them up? I don't know. And so instead I'm on here with this community knowing that I have a listening ear and just whining about it. I'm so sorry, Gorilla's random thought. I I hate censorship. That is, I I I do think that while we should stop hating people or at least back off on it, we need to continue to hate certain things. Censorship is one thing that I think we actually need to hate. Uh, yeah, I'll probably go there uh, here in about thirty minutes. Mr. Londell has a presentation. So I'm going to try to wrap this up in about 20 minutes. <laughs> you should change your name. Gorilla's Random Thoughts should change his name to Gorilla's Censored Thoughts. <laughs> that is a good idea. That's a wonderful idea. Happy to share a decent idea on occasion. Thank you very much. I love this community. It's a, such a good bunch of people. Okay. Since I only have 20 minutes, I'm going to skip to another video that I wanted to share. And okay. Uh, this is Tulsi Gabbard commenting on who is really in power.
Oh, now I can't find the video. Thank you, Google, for being so supportive. Here, I'll share this one instead because I'm sure it will be good. This is uh, the channel Jocko Podcast Clips. I have yet to see a, a bad Jocko's podcast clip. Is in the midst of an existential crisis. I have friends who are Democrats, Republicans, Independents, and Libertarians. I have nothing but respect for all of them. Some work in the field of politics, but most do not. This book is not being written out of spite or animosity toward anyone because of their political affiliation. My message to you is an urgent warning. Those in control of today's Demo Democrat Party and permanent Washington are leading us down a very dangerous path that threatens our freedom, democracy, and ability to thrive in a peaceful, prosperous country. That's the opening. Coming out of the gate <laughs> swinging. Are you paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> you came out of the gate. I, I I will say, when I read that, I was like, okay, I can. this is going to be a very straightforward yeah. assessment of what's going on. And, you know, you specifically say the Democrat Party and Permanent Washington. Permanent Washington, that's... There's, there's permanent Washington that's Republican. There's per permanent Washington that are conservative. There's permanent Washington that are liberal. There's permanent Washington that are Democrats. But you call it the Democrat Party. Is that because that's what you were in and that's what you saw? Or do you see a difference? And we kind of already touched on this, but do you see an actual difference between the, the Democrat establishment and the Republican establishment? I am very curious to know what her answer is, and I would be happy if you all would just let me know in the chat what you think about that. I've already stated what I think, but I'm, in spite of uh, the way I do things, I really am not intending to tell people how to think. Uh, but I would be curious to know, what do you guys think? Is there a substantive difference I know CODIS Fact Search had shared that uh, the Democratic Party, in his opinion, and I both respect and agree with his assessment, is the more dangerous one now. But uh, I would be really fascinated to know what you guys think. Uh, two things. First, I, I got some notes when I when I put out the book cover before the book actually came out, and I got some notes from some supporters of mine who were being very helpful saying, uh, hey, you got a typo on the book, on, on your book cover. It's supposed to be Democratic Party, but you forgot those last couple of letters there. Um, I, I was very intentional in using that term because, unfortunately, this party that I used to belong to uh, is not Democratic in practice, in execution, in reality at all. And I think that that's an important point uh, to make. Um, in, in many ways, uh, there are similarities and overlap there between the permanent Washington establishment, which includes, um, not only those who are elected officials from both parties, but it is that administrative state. It is the, uh, you know, the big propaganda media that, that essentially do the bidding of the Democrat elite. It is the... And if you don't believe that, you may not be able to find it on Google, but go to X and look up the articles that came out uh, during the Trump assassination attempt. And you will, I, I don't know how you can not see by looking at those articles and looking at the event as it transpired the only way you can believe that there's not bias is by being deliberately blind or by making the assumption that the Republican Party is so bad that it justifies this level of partisanship. And I, I firmly disagree. I don't see it as being the worst of the two parties. It's bad. Don't get me wrong. It's definitely bad. I, it's hard to hold my head up as a Republican, but yeah, I, I humbly suggest the Democrats are profoundly worse and she saw it and she left.
those who are working, um, unfortunately, within the national security state in some ways to weaponize those institutions to execute the agenda of the Democrat elite. Uh, it is the big tech monopolies who are acting as the arm of the Democrat elite to circumvent the Constitution and censor everyday Americans. So it's it's a it it is the the shortest term that that creates that umbrella of those um, who ultimately don't have the Constitution or our best interests at heart. Sometimes, you know, when, when you look at some of the Republicans who are part of that permanent Washington establishment, uh, on, on, in some areas, there may be a divergence or, or a disagreement with the Democrat elite on different issues. Uh, but, but fundamentally on the issues of, of war and peace, of civil liberties and of freedom, there is far, uh, there, there is far too much that they stand together on that really does speak to that hunger for power uh, as being the most important thing. Uh, the paradox that I want to comment on here is I, I love the thought that Reagan had. There, Reagan made some mistakes, but I love a lot of the things that he said but of course we have to evaluate people by what they did, not by what they said. But where I'm going with this is the idea that if you and I agree about 80% of things and we love our country and want it to be a, a better country, let's work on that 80%. Let's, you know, we, we can deal with that other 20% when we've made things better on that 80%. Having said that, when it's the, the big elites that are agreeing on 80 or 90 percent of the things, the danger to me is that where they agree is in that they hate us. They think... This, again, I'm, I'm doing your thinking for you and I shouldn't, but I do feel that. And I know feelings aren't what matter. Facts do. But I think you can look at what they're doing and at least be forgiven for thinking that someone who does these things hates us, thinks we are stupid, thinks we're not capable of running our own lives, thinks that they... They know better than we do how to run our lives. And that ain't cool. <clears throat> I hope I'm still here. Can you still hear me? Yeah, anyway, hopefully. I'd... DJ Ronnie G, that basically sums up their prevailing attitude. Those guys are Yahtzees, XYZ. It's not only justified, but it is their moral obligation. Exactly. This is why I'm, I'm not sticking up for Trump because I think he's a wonderful guy. It's because I think we've gone down this dangerous slope of thinking that he is literally the antichrist. I have had a person on my channel. Maybe he was just joking, but, but he, he, he made that illusion that Trump is the antichrist. And I think that's the dangerous thinking because when you have demonized someone, even, even Biden or or Hillary Clinton, who I actually think is, is more dangerous than Biden ever was. But anyway, demonizing them is not going to help because then you're justified in anything that you do. Any lie that you tell about them is justified. Any, any violence that you do, it's all justified because they're evil and they're demons. Um, and that's the thing that I want to be backing away from. You know, I'm, I'm don't care if you, as much as I'm hopping up and down, I really don't care if you're pro Biden, if you're pro Trump, whatever, but please don't, don't do this thing where they're so very evil that anything we do 
is justified to take them down. Uh, that's why the summer of riots was okay and January 6th wasn't. Yeah. And I, and I, frankly, I'm respect with some respect to my liberal friends, I am sick and tired of having to silence all my speech because January 6th happened. One, I was not there. Two, if I was there, I probably wouldn't have participated in violence and let I, because me, I, I, I'm only a threat to someone who threatens me. Literally. That's it. If you don't threaten me, I'm I'm not going to do anything. But at the same time, I think that we need to be intellectually honest and understand that some of the people there had legitimate reasons for being very upset with the government. And unless we're willing to deal with those legitimate things, it's intellectually dishonest to basically say, well, January 6th happened, so that means the political opposition is completely corrupt, completely full of crap, it has no good ideas, and they're just evil, and we have to do anything we can to run them out of existence, basically. DJ Ronnie G, Reagan gets blamed for random things when multiple presidents had opportunities to remedy those issues. So it's, it's a good point. Uh, you know, if you, if you don't like the things that Reagan did, we've had... 40 years and the, the, the things that, I mean, I have what I think are legitimate complaints about Reagan. Uh, the closing of the small banks, I think that was unconscionable and wrong. And while I, I am willing to listen to <clears throat> the argument that that may not, I, I doubt that that was his idea. It happened too early in his administration I think that was the idea of the permanent state that she's talking about. And having said that, it did happen under his watch. And therefore, I think it's legitimate to criticize Reagan about it. Having said that, we've had 40 years and those banks haven't, they're not, they haven't been reestablished. The small farmers that were getting those loans, they're still not getting loans. Nothing has been done to correct the situation. So why keep blaming Reagan about it? It's one of the reasons why I don't bring it up that much. It, it literally bankrupted my family. It's put a shadow over my entire fucking life. But one, I can't use that as a crutch and blame everything that's happened on that. And number two, um, We've had 40 years. We, we should have fixed it by now. I'm not going to blame. I'm not going to really harp about Reagan doing that when, simply put, we just haven't fixed it. CODIS Fact Search has just joined a club. Yes, you didn't know, but I'm seducing you to the dark side. No, I'm just glad you're here. Um, I'm just glad that we're a community, and I'm hopefully – trying my best to, to make it, uh, you know, I think that, uh, Troy Pacelli deleted scenes. Um, uh, uh, I've, I've gotten, uh, a little bit of experience with gorillas, random thoughts. I think some of you guys, uh, more Rikitti do wonderful jobs with, uh, having, even though it may be small, but having a community of people that, that care about each other, care about these things. DJ Ronnie G, there's violence on January 6th. And well, here's another thing. Look, I'm not going so far as to saying that there wasn't any violence. But how much of it was freaking agents that were sent out there to stir up trouble? Uh, I, I don't want to reveal the person because I, I, they 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 want to keep their secrets. But I know someone who's who's worked with some of these intel agencies, and uh, hopefully I'm quoting him right. If I'm not, hopefully he'll let me know. But that's been going on for decades. A lot of these riots have have instigators in them that are hired often by the freaking Democrat party. And 
I know I'm making an outrageous claim and I've got little to back it up except for a very knowledgeable person. Okay? Not me, sadly. I mean, I'm not as knowledgeable as them is what I mean by that, but it's been going on for decades. We've been lied to so much. It, it makes you understand why people do become conspiracy theorists. Um, yeah, and that's a valid point. Respectfully to my left-leaning friends, an officer had a heart attack a week later, so they arranged to have a big funeral procession convoy, convoy, convoy in his home state with flags hanging over the, from the overpasses. And don't get me wrong, I feel bad for the officer. I'm sorry that that happened to him. But having said that, we've been lied to and told that there were dozens of deaths and all kinds of stuff. There, there was essentially one. I don't mean to poo-poo that. That's still, that's still one too many. But nothing compared to the riots that the other side embraced as peaceful protests. What? Where's the intellectual honesty? Codis Fact Search, history. Reagan was against private gun ownership from California governor to president. Yeah, and you're not wrong there. You're not wrong there. Reagan was a politician and one-time bad actor. Oh, come on. I disagree with you. Bedtime for Bonzo changed my life. <laughs> I love you, sir. Because uh, fact search, uh, officer heart attack wasn't the sixth fault is the donuts. Yeah, yeah. Andrew Jackson was the last good president. I know how you feel about Andrew Jackson. I need to do more research about him. Uh, be careful. You don't mistake the Indian wars of his time with modern views. Yeah, no, that's a valid point, too. Uh, people have changed their views about An uh, Andrew Jackson. And I'll be honest, I allowed myself to have my views of him changed, and it's probably not right or fair. Uh, I need to do more research on him. Never before have I ever seen, according to DJ Ronnie, uh, ever seen a heart attack blamed on a rough day at work the week prior. Uh, DJ Ronnie G, as for Reagan and Second Amendment, uh, yeah, I know. I know. Uh, I, I may be mistaken. So please correct me if I'm wrong. Code is fact search, but I know that Ronald Reagan was, um, pretty prohibitive of black people owning guns in California. I don't, uh, it, there's probably more that I don't know, but code is fact search. Evidence supports what I'm saying. Yeah, thank you. DJ Ronnie G, old hickory. Yep, old hickory. One of the very few presidents not from a long time ago politician family. Yeah, yeah, he, whatever else you may think of him, he is one of those people who raised himself up from his own freaking bootstraps. Um, yeah, Reagan, it's, it's uh, from what I know, and I don't know enough, but uh, he wasn't, he always talked like he was a big proponent of the Second Amendment, but really not so much. We, we I won't go too deep into that. Uh, but yeah, Reagan, as, as much as I, I still love him, I'm just saying that because it's true, not because it's necessarily right, but, but he had holes in his armor. He sure did. He, he wasn't all that in a bag of chips. Okay, I'm down to just a few minutes. So let me... I'm going to spend at least some of that time on... the real reason why she left the Democrat party. I'm going to choose this one. Tulsi, great to have you with us here today. Hey, Don. Finally, we keep missing each other every... And yes, I know, Donald, uh, Donald Jr., he's the bad guy. He's a racist, yada, 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 yada. Not saying he's a good person, but 
yeah, a lot of a lot of lies told about this family, and I'm sure a lot of lies told about the Clinton family too. So no one's perfect. Coda's fact search. At the end of the day, what we will see in history is that there are no heroes, and the villains are often put in the same status simply because their side wins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every time. I know, <laughs> like like ships passing city in the whatever. night. We literally miss each other by like six hours. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, having this conversation skip, it's up here on the live skip stream some of the pleasantries. Uh, and even for the last couple of months you know, uh you're thrown out as a you know a vp potential hopeful uh some people love some people scared they don't know what to what to sort of make of it I, you, but you've you've been pretty clear you've been attacked by the democrat party when did you realize you no longer fit that party mold what moments really stand out to you in all of this Hey, well, Don, before you came on, uh, or actually when you first started your opening comments, uh, I took a look at the comments coming in as well. And and to all of, all of you who have questions or concerns, um, this is one of the reasons why I wrote this book. Mm -hmm. uh, I joined the Democratic Party over 20 years ago when I first ran for state house here in Hawaii. I was 21 years old. The Democratic Party looked completely different back then, even 10 years ago looked quite different than it does today. Uh, I can't tell you that there was one singular moment that, that caused me to say, okay, this is it. The Democratic Party has left me behind. But it was a, it was a continued escalation of, of events and comments and the, the overall mentality that show that the Democrat Party of today does not care about our country. They don't care about the Constitution. They certainly don't care about the American people. They care about one thing, and that's power. And everything that we've seen play out in the Biden administration over the last three and a half years points to exactly that objective. Whether we're talking about what's happening at the border or we're talking about the lawfare and the use misuse of the Department of Justice and law enforcement to go after their foremost political opponent, President Trump, as well as others who have the audacity just to challenge their position or speak up in opposition to it, they too are targeted. There, I go into my book, my book is For Love of Country, Leave the Democrat Party Behind. And I go into each of these really big issues that I wanted to focus on that all kind of center into our fundamental rights, our God-given rights and freedoms enshrined in the Constitution and how the- All valid points, but while I love the lady, I don't really feel like selling her book, but- I love the points that she's making. Have a great day, sir. I need to be wrapping this up. Um, long and the short. One, yes, we need to, to clamp down on the hate, but please make no mistake. The Democratic Party and the elites in the Republican Party, they do not care about you. They do not have brilliant foreign policy. They don't. Uh, they don't care about liberty. In fact, they want to curtail it. I think one of the most revealing things was the interview between Don Lemon and uh, Elon Musk. I could talk forever, but I got to get going, and I know you guys have got to get going. So, while I did pretty nearly everything else wrong. I will guide us out with the soft brown music that I use. I have left some links in the chat. So please, if you don't have another place to go to, <laughs> yeah, Don Lemon was, uh, in my humble opinion, did not shine in that interview. It was portrayed as Elon being unfair and being censorious, but the irony is Don Lemon was the one who was being censorious. Oh, I made a lot of mistakes on this one, but I appreciate you. You're very kind. I love this community because of that. You're very forgiving of people's honest failings. Mm. Well, let me thank everyone that showed up today and call it a stream. I would like to thank 
John Pontiero, otherwise known as JPRPH1. One of these days we need to do another stream, maybe talk about some poetry or talk about the tick. Thank you very much, Moira Kitty, meow meow. You're very supportive, very uh, knowledgeable, and very feisty. <laughs> Um, thank you, Codus Fact Search. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the knowledge. Thank you very much, Mr. Lundell's Groovy Movies. I hope uh, that as many of you as can will go and watch his presentation coming up in just seven minutes. Thank you very much, Gorilla's Random Thoughts. You not only made one of my streams, you made it much better. I thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you very much, Connie Cleary. I can't say enough how much I, I value having you on here, having you uh, mon uh, monitor and things. Um, someday we need to do another interview. This time I'll, I promise I'll try to do it better and right. But you were wonderful in that. And I thank you. It was one of my five, I think it was my fifth or sixth most viewed live stream, I think. Pretty close to it. And who else have I got here? I feel like I'm leaving somebody out and I don't want to do Oh, yes. DJ Ronnie G. How, and how could I forget? The chronic fatigue is real. Thank you very much. And thank you for sharing your clip. I'm going to go to Mr. Londell's and then probably watch your show there. So I love everyone that showed up today. Remember that the, the fight isn't necessarily against flesh and blood. It's not necessarily against Biden or the Clintons or people. It's a, against this, this spiritual or intellectual force that says that liberty is wrong, we're not good enough to be free, we don't deserve to be free. Sometimes I wonder if that's true, but even if it is, I don't think these blankety blanks need to be the ones calling the shots. Thanks again for listening. I will probably try to edit out the first <laughs> little bit and uh, have a wonderful Saturday.